Hello friends, today I am going to be talking about the novel My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Ken Braithwaite. First off, if I butchered that name, I'm sorry. So last week, I talked with you all about one of my fears that I'm trying to tackle this year, which is short stories. Well, my other fear in the literary world happens to be book reviews. While I am a pretty opinionated person, I think, I'm also pretty internal about those opinions, so reviews are just not a territory that comes naturally to me. That being said, I would like to get better at them. When I was trying to figure out how exactly to go about doing this, my first angle was to compile a list of novels that fit into a certain category, like award winners, novels in a particular genre, things like that. But while I was thinking this, it then hit me how this list would be this new thing I was creating that would add on to my already massive list of books I need to read including books that are recommendations from friends and family that I just haven't been able to get at. And that is when I had my light bulb moment and figured out what books I was going to review. I wouldn't put off my list of recommendations. Instead, I would use that list for reviews and bring my friends and family in on the conversation. Not only would having someone else there be a nice kind of stepping stone for anxiety, but it would be a great opportunity to bond with the people that I love. One of my best friends, who I met when we were four years old, <laughs> volunteered to be my first sacrifice, and she had a great suggestion for a book that I'd love. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy Anna and my chat about My Sister, the Serial Killer. So we are talking about My Sister, the Serial Killer. And to start with a little summary, Corey Day's sister, Isla, is many things. The favorite child, the beautiful one, possibly sociopathic, and now Iola's third boyfriend in a row is dead, stabbed through the heart with Iola's knife. Corriday's practicality is the sister's saving grace. She knows the best solutions for cleaning blood, bleach, bleach, and more bleach, the best way to move a body, wrap it in sheets like a mummy, and she keeps Iola from posting pictures to Instagram when she should be mourning her missing boyfriend. Not that she gets any credit. Corriday has long been in love with a kind, handsome doctor at the hospital where she works. She dreams of the day when he will realize that she's exactly what he needs. But when he asks Corriday for Ayala's phone number, she must reckon with what her sister has become and how far she's willing to go to protect her. <laughs> so you recommended this book to me. I did. Um, probably knowing that I have an unhealthy obsession with death. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> But um, what did what did you like about this book, and what uh, made you recommend it to me? Uh, I mean, I I love a good sort of mystery, thriller, crimey sort of genre. Um, and this book, I have to say, was recommended to me by my good pal Marika, oh, who cool. is a great poet and great. She always gives me great book recommendations. Um, so I knew I was going to like it. But I think what I really liked in it was. I mean, so the, the, the novel is told from the perspective of Corriday, who is Ayula's sister. Mm. Ayula is the, the girl who is, is or, you know, is not a sociopathic serial killer. I think she is. She, yeah, I mean. <laughs> but there's it, some reasons behind that. Totally. It goes yeah. deeper than that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, Corriday is a, she's a really good narrator because she's not an unreliable narrator in the sense that you don't trust kind of like her POV. Mm -hmm. But you do get the, you do really feel this like, this deep tension that is pulling her in two directions. One is like, from day one, it says, you know, she was, when her little sister was born into the world, she is like a little doll and she wants yeah. to protect her and she loves her so much. And she's a very like stable, uh, meticulous, like kind of carefully planning person. And so when her sister turns out to be who she is, she's like, the, this, this desire to care for her questions her morals and makes her sort of act in ways that she probably otherwise would not, yeah. right? You it, know, like covering up sort after of, murder. It sort of takes that um, that that sister relationship that's, you know, so noteworthy and takes it to its extreme, <laughs> I would Super say. Super extreme. <laughs> Super extreme, yeah. But then there's like also exactly what you said. Like it's it's not like 
of a different kind than any other sister relationship. It's just like stretched to some sort of like limit. So we can all, if we have like sisters or people we're close to in our lives, we can like recognize elements of that. Mm. Those like tensions. Like what level of self sacrifice are you are you willing to go to with yeah. the people you care about? Yeah. <laughs> And how much are you going to, like, be honest with yourself about, like, where your true kind of, like, moral center is? There, yeah, there there were a lot of blinders, I think, in this uh, this story, even, which is kind of weird because it's also very honest. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's very honest. You're getting the interior thoughts of Corday, of course, yeah. but um, she obviously has some, some blinders and some parameters that allow her to do what she's doing, which is cleaning up murders. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and there were there were some interesting themes in this that I just sort of took some notes of, which were you know, loyalty, mm-hmm. um, trauma, the passing down of abusive behavior. That mm. was a really interesting theme. And and let me say this: so this book is is very short. It's like two hundred and twenty six pages, and the chapters are sometimes you know one or two pages. And for that, the author is really able to tell a very in-depth story mm-hmm. like awesome really well it's 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 strange like i i admired how simplistic it was yeah but how you have this character growth and this interior monologue yeah. and, and development and history and, and irony and like, so much oh like, yeah simple sentences where you're like oh <laughs> yeah like <laughs> so i was watching an interview with the author um because i was just sort of looking into it a little bit after oh, cool. i read it she actually didn't consider it comedic at all when she was writing it. And then when the book came out, people were saying, this is a dark comedy. And she was like, wait, what? <laughs> so it's kind of interesting oh, knowing that. I don't know if you... actually very interesting. I, know, I, right? I would have thought it was... I mean, but... or Yeah, because it... I guess I just took it as very ironic. There's so mm-hmm. many moments where Sheila, where Corday will really reveal something that, as the reader, we're like, oh, I see how this relates to your relationship. Yeah. But she's saying it just sort of in the context of that one particular moment. But it's so just like flavored right you know mm-hmm. that it really like it doesn't ring as like clung- clunky or overly like you know like um manipulative on the author's yeah, part yeah like really that's works. that's one of the things that i was thinking about this because so this is actually one i would consider reading a second time through because yeah. i just sort of i i read it and my first take was kind of okay i enjoyed that yeah but it was you know it was, it was easy to read it was a very easy read but then sort of the more you think on it where you go this author is actually really really clever totally because this wouldn't have been an easy read like if other people wrote it no and it, this this story could have gone on for like a thousand pages honestly totally. and um something i'm experimenting with this year is short stories and That's i think nice. that even though this isn't like a, a short story it uses all of the the things that I would want to use in a short story where you take something big and you condense it down in this very Mm -hmm. well-flowing thing like it it just flows so smoothly it's great yeah great like spareness of language but at the same time it's not like minimalist it's not like Mm -hmm. a freaking like Hemingway like it is actually really delivering some serious texture like 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 the description of Lagos it's set in Lagos Nigeria and it's like so you really get a sense of that place and and which you wouldn't be able to do otherwise you know yeah, I love the, the language that was sprinkled throughout as well. That's another thing I would want to get into rereading. So there are, there are words and, you know, cultural aspects in here that I was not familiar with. So I'd like to go back and sort of go through all of them and learn all of that as well. Um, totally. Yeah. Like I looked through, I looked into one, one kind of interesting thing, and I'm, I'm trying to not give like mega spoilers here, and right. I think we can talk about it without doing that. Even though, like, this book came out in 2018, so it's not brand new, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but still. Um, There's a theme of corruption in the whole environment that these women are in. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was handled in a a very interesting way. Um, Like, just one of the things that first I latched onto is the fact that this family has a, a house girl. I was like, what, what's a house girl? Mm. And I started delving into it and it's this, you know, upper middle class kind of, you know, servant type position, um, which sometimes has a lot of dark aspects to it. And you find out that even the family that Corriday is in is dark in a lot of ways. So she's kind of 
situated to behave the way she does with her sister. Like Mm -hmm. there's unavoidable aspects of that, which are really interesting. Yeah. Right. That's, that's actually such a interesting layer you pull out like that, that thing of like, here's sort of the official script, the, like the, the niceties, and then here's how we actually handle things like Mm -hmm. below the surface, which like even, um, again, not to get into too many spoilers, but there's like the incidents where, you know, she's like, gets pulled over by the by the police when yeah. and and after the you know the, the the first the first scene in the in the book is her coming to help Ayola clean up after yeah. <laughs> this the the her you know self defensive killing of this boyfriend yeah, she you, helps you dive right she in she helps stash the body clean up after it so she's very you know anxious and on edge the cops pull her over of course it's just sort of like a traffic check but she sort of knows how to navigate the system. She tries mm-hmm. to play like she's like lower class, so she's gonna get off easier. She tries to, you know, like the, she changes just, the way she speaks so that they yeah. think that she's a different, like you said, class than she is, which yeah. is which is interesting to see that navigation, how she has to do that. And, yeah. Um, uh, act- actually, when uh, we were talking about them just jumping in, and I was talking about short <laughs> chapters, the first chapter. <laughs> which I can read, is just called Words, and it says, Ayola summons me with these words. Koride, I killed him. I had hoped I would never hear those words again. Ooh. And, <laughs> and, like, opening lines are so important, right? And that one just hits you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally. This book is, like, just... It, it, and it kind of carries that, like, tenor all the way through. Like, it is very... Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's, like... Because Koride herself is very just, like, staid... And, oh, yeah. and like watchful and kind of meticulous and and like she she's not one to like jump into action versus mm-hmm. like Iola who is just like the person who just drives all this action she's totally like, self indulgent and just like I'm beautiful and everyone loves me and I can do anything I want and yes. like they're very opposite yet there's Corday like being her foundation and just supporting her through everything <laughs> yeah even despite like and I think I mean it's interesting like I don't know if you have a, or to talk about sort of like the gen- gender and yeah. like sort of yeah. like the different representations of masculinity oh, within yeah. the book because yeah. I mean I think like and again not to give too many spoilers but mm-hmm. the so their father who is now at the time of the present in the book is passed away um, was a sort of domineering patriarchal figure in the oh, yeah. you know in in the Nigerian culture um, and it's very threatening. I think they do bring that in fairly early on too, because yeah. it's it's a thread that sort of goes throughout the story and uh, is never fully revealed. Like no. it's, but sort it's it's very heavy. Yeah, you, you know, you you feel it while you're reading. Totally, and so I mean, like lots of like the motif of violence sort of mm-hmm. in their childhood, and especially heavy on Ayula. Yeah, for being a sort of like extra beautiful, extra sort of like sexualized from an early age. Yeah, like instantly, person. even they talk about how her mother goes, like can tell that this girl's going to be beautiful yeah. right she, when she's born, and yeah. they immediately put her on a pedestal, which is just... So between the mother putting her on the pedestal and the father being abusive, it's just like the most toxic situation you could imagine. It is, and it's also like, I think the source of Corday's like protective instinct, or like maybe sort of the maturation of her protective instinct, because her mm-hmm. sister is being treated with this like... You know, there's two sides of the same coin. One is this, like, extra admiration from the yeah. world, and the other is, like, she's now the sort of, like, locus of so much more, like, violence, male desire, male aggression. Commodification. Commodification within the patriarchal society. And so I think this sort of, like, forms this interesting mirror then with, like, the, you know, um, Cordy's love interest, this, like, handsome doctor who yeah. takes interest in Ayula. Maybe a little bit of how he even though he's supposed to see, be seen as a nice guy, he really mirrors the father because he's seeing her as nothing else than just the same prettiness, but yeah, from a more kind of like benign standpoint, right? Yeah, and, and I think that that's important because that happens with all of the men that she's with yeah. to some extent. And uh, they start off, you'll, you'll see them as sort of the ideal, and Corday looks at them as the ideal. Deal. Yeah, because right, the first person who we you know meet that Ayola kills, yeah. Corday spends most of the novel idealizing him. When one thing I noticed right away, and I don't know if this is, um, mm. I don't know if this was purposeful or not, but I didn't think his poetry was good. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it was like <laughs> it was very awful. obviously like like uh, MySpace poetry. Yeah, so he's a, a poet and an artist, and yeah. and I actually had a I, I took these off, but I had a because I didn't wind up putting a lot of notes. I just thought I'm gonna yeah. go through this later, but I had a little posted at one point on his poem that said "Reason enough to kill him." <laughs> 
<laughs> so, because it's it's just like it's this two dimensional stuff, and you have Corday there, who's yeah. who's seeing the positive side of these men, and like, look, he's romantic and he's an artist. It's like, but yeah, at the base, he is also still this thing that their father was, and yeah. that's what Isla is encountering when she panics and and kills people, yeah. and and you have that with the the you know the prospective love interest of Corday as well where he is he's very much a different person through the novel like the first half he's one mm-hmm. who's he's through Corday's eyes yes, only that's right and then the second half you see this other side and it's a very interesting perspective change it's true through interfacing with Ayula he's like this yeah the the his sort of perfection his like sheen is shattered mm-hmm. yeah you see him just for being cool. Again, another sort of like red blooded male within this sort of patriarchal society who's like again looking upon women as like lesser and only sort of objectified and and not necessarily at the same time to his own detriment, mm-hmm. uh, not seeing them for the potential that they have, you know, to, for like yeah. anything. And I guess sort of that's symbolized with the potential for harm, but I guess, mm-hmm. yeah. And there was actually, I, I think, yeah, this was this was a line that he said though when we were talking about those lines that hit really hard, this was one that I really liked, um, where at one point he, he says to the main character, there's something wrong with her, but you, what's your excuse? And it's just like uh, the evolution that these characters go through and, and how you see them is, is very well done. And he says that, again, I feel like spoil. I, I know. I, I spoil- yeah, well, we can, you know. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> He's, it's definitely in the second half, as yeah. Holly says, where, like, after the sort of the, the rose-colored glasses have come off ar- around Tade, the doctor, and he's caught Coronet doing something kind of, like, that reveals her position a little bit. She's And then she's put in this really, really awkward position of having to, uh, w- like, so there's this guy she likes who now likes her sister, she loves her sister, she's trying to protect her sister, but now she's trying to protect also this guy from her sister and like stand in this triangle. And, and she can't do anything right in this situation. She can't, but she's, it's like, it's like turning the idea of the love triangle kind of like on this like twisted, <laughs> murderous edge. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so she's yeah. trying to say like, she says, I think at one point she's like, like things never end up well in her relationships and mm-hmm. the guy says, oh yeah, well men can be harmful and she's like, it's not that you know yeah Yeah. so she tries to tell him (laughs) and uh yeah and like how do you how do you reveal that and like oh the the whole other uh element with the coma patient yes was completely (laughs) completely out there and i guess if we're gonna sort of because i want to i want to i want to get into this and there will be spoilers just because of how it gets to the end so i think it's not too okay. bad to I'll I'll put an alert up when we're spoiling we're everybody. Doing, we're, spoiling, we're spoiling. We're doing it. <laughs> um, just like I thought that element was so so good, and and it was the thing that like it was the one good thing kind mm-hmm. of because yeah. there's this you know you're surrounded by corruption. Corday thinks she's doing good things, but she's really not, and she's uh, like she's. It, encouraging this behavior when really she should not be Isla's not a good person like she's you know there's there's reasons there's background and everything for that but like she's not a good person at this point their mother mm-hmm. isn't but then you have this I mean it says something in the first place that the um the only good person can't even talk yeah <laughs> in the story so you have Corday um confiding in this coma patient who eventually in the story wakes up mm-hmm. which is very interesting and then you learn about his life like it's just <laughs> and he goes from being this like neutral repository yeah. for Corday's sort of confessions and, mm-hmm. and like moral guilt and con- guilty conscience to having like a wife who's trying to divorce him to having a son who's trying to get married and doesn't like the old the other woman he was trying so like he becomes from this like uh and I almost I mean not to like fucking read too much into it <laughs> but like in a way which what Corday is doing to, his name is Mutar I think yeah Mutar to say like he's just this like flat object upon which she can sort of just like talk to and he doesn't talk back and it's sort of oversimplified mm-hmm. it's mirroring in a maybe a little bit of a way sort of oh, like yeah. the gendered way that like you know women are looked at where it's like you're not expected to have a sort of complex mm-hmm. inner life or life and it's inconvenient when you do so she's getting to play with that idea yeah. by having this man who's lying there and he's the know. he's the neutral man mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, and that that is inter- interesting because, like, in this world, the ideal man is one who lies there and doesn't yeah. say or do anything. Right. <laughs> like that's the the better option. <laughs> I mean, but but at the same time, like, I mean, you said like they're they're bad people, but I think like the question is like, are they? Like, mm-hmm. who is who is good and who is bad at all? It it really questions that a lot I find like, and, and you go back and forth going like okay but you know this happened to her and did this guy really do this and and you know like you, you you're very at odds and I think that um that the author really leaves so much open for interpretation yeah which is is good in a suspense novel I think you want to keep chewing on it <laughs> you do it you do because it always hinges on like the like all of these like moments of murder they hinge on Ayula saying, he attacked me first. Mm-hmm. I responded in self-defense. Ayula, I mean, Akorade uh, coming in and saying, I so, you know, I'm going to like believe you, whether or not she actually fully believes her. I think that's beside the point. The point mm-hmm. is like that loyalty yeah. or whatever, like and not only loyalty from the sense of like Korade putting her, putting Ayula before herself, but I think it's actually, what is she getting out of that mm-hmm. relationship too? Yeah. Um, Honestly, I think we've we've covered quite a bit here. Uh, there's, I mean, there's the whole I said commodification before, but like commodification of beauty. That yeah. was a huge yeah. topic. And in the mother's this. influence on that. Yeah, and that is I, like I think it's very interesting because it's very it's uh, the novel is very even with how it, uh, it it points out negatives with with female culture as well as male culture. because yeah. you have. It, and and I, Isla is kind of in this horrible position, really, because like when we talked about when she was a child, you know, you have the yeah. mother coming at her from one angle and the father from another angle, yeah. and they just expand on that in the whole worldview of like in the end, beauty kind of means everything. Yeah, and if you're a beautiful person, like you're you can even, get away with murder. Yeah, but also it's <laughs> like your your like options are. It seems like they're expanded, but maybe from your own lived experience, they're kind of like shrunken. Like, mm-hmm. and so what art, what it, what latitude do you have when everybody's always looking at you when everything's like, kind of, yeah. Because well, because everyone has end, like, do they, do they, and do they care about you or are they just seeing your beauty? Because yeah. with uh, do they want something. With, yeah. Um, Ta- Tare, is that how you I think so, yeah. Okay. I was looking these up earlier. But, um, <laughs> uh, with with him, he seems like someone who might have some depth, but the second he sees Ayala, that depth is gone. Yeah. It's just, it's it's out the window. It's like, beautiful girl, done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Which also, I mean, like, like maybe like a sort of smaller theme or just a smaller point to make about, like, that Corey's character kind of contains is that, like, wanting something you can idealize it when you get up close to it of course and when it actually wants you back and you're sort of you're confronted with like the reality of a situation things are always a little less glamorous and a little less picture perfect Mm -hmm. which is like the the two sisters typify those like those different distances between men and themselves Ayola is always like having to fight men off so she can see their ugliness and it doesn't matter whereas Corday is like idealizing them and yeah, because yeah. they're unattainable for her. So it's like it's it's always the dream. It's always that sort of yeah. puppy love phase instead of actual real love. <laughs> yeah, totally. And it's like these sort of weird positions that like adult women are forced to like be in one or the other really of, especially within this society. Like you don't really ever get to just be like equals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're you got to pick one side, and both or in both sides kind of suck. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah, so I mean, for for a you know under three hundred word novel that is in the sort of horror realm, horror comedy, dark comedy, yeah. uh, it really explores a lot, and I would definitely recommend it. I'm glad totally. you recommended it to me. Oh, I'm so I glad enjoyed you, it a lot. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And you recommended another book that I'm going to read as well, but I'm glad I picked this one because okay. yeah. I, I love I love the murder. <laughs> Yeah, and like I blood dress. I've never read a novel set in Nigeria either. Like that. That was also... I like that. Like I said, I want to look into the language and everything mm. a bit more, and just sort of the the culture. I like that a yeah, lot. Yeah, the interesting where they to see had that like point of view. the Yoruba like written out. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know what it means, but it's kind of cool to see it like spelled and like yeah. yeah. And and so much, uh, so much horror. So much of this genre is like very white. Yes, <laughs> very totally. white male North America. So mm-hmm. it's it's really cool to see a different perspective. Totally, a Nigerian different, uh, tackling woman of it. writer. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, is there anything else you would say about the book? 
Ooh, I mean, I know I think we've covered like everything. I mean, yeah. definitely like read it. I'm sure even from listening to this, like it doesn't even the like the experience of reading the book is so good. Yeah, it's you got so, it, and it's not going to yeah. take you long. Um, no, it's and, like a it's like a two sitting. Yeah, and you'll want to read it again. I'm going to for sure. Nice, <laughs> nice. Maybe me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When did you read it last? Um, well, I read it when uh, Marika suggested it to me, so that was a year and a half ago, and okay. then I just like sort of skimmed through it. I was like, right, because there's so many characters. I, I don't know. remember the names, so I was like skimming through the chapters yeah. <laughs> like earlier today, and I was like, oh yeah, right. Oh my god, yeah, that was such a cool like plot point. But it yeah, really stuck with so me, much you know. There. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for my coming pleasure. here today. Um, I, I actually mentioned you in one of my older videos. I don't know if you saw it with Chandra. We had a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Anna will have to come here at some point and explain herself for all the comics and weird art. Oh, my. Um, so we still haven't done that. We'll but do a this is two. Anna. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yeah. Um, and I guess last but not least, I'm going to add bookends on this, but uh, anything you want to say about stuff you're working on? Because I like to give that opportunity. And you're oh. working on lots of cool stuff. Oh, so. that's kind of you. <laughs> well, I mean, right now I'm mostly just working on school, but um, you, if anybody's interested in short films that are pretty nice and they feature gorgeous depictions of rotting and decaying things and fermenting things, um, a, collaborate, a collaborator and I just made a film called Rot, um, and you can watch it on YouTube or Vimeo. It's spelled W-R-O-U-G-H-T. It's about 20 minutes. It's free online. It's really amazing. Yeah, so you can find that um, at rotfilm.ca, W-R-O-U-G-H-T, film.ca. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed our conversation. I was actually surprised at how easy it was to launch into. Like, we just sat down and it happened. <laughs> but I guess that that kind of comes with the territory when you've known your collaborator for about 30 years. I definitely recommend that you check out Anna's projects. Seriously, I can't stress enough how impressive her film Rot is. Links are in the description down below. With that, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you actually get notified when I post new videos. Oh, and have you read this novel? If you have, what did you think? Let me know. Last but not least, I hope that you are having a day that is just as wonderful as you are. Bye.